HB1 visas are temporary work permits issued to foreigners who are not seeking a permanent move to the U.S. As Channel 5's Valerie Gonzalez reports, they're also harder to come by these days. The government is denying more people the chance to work or keep working in the U.S. A Mother Jones investigation found they're doing it by looking more closely at those applications after a Trump-era executive order was signed. Up in Houston, a man was performing so well at his IT job, his employers asked the government to extend his H-1B visa. That's what allows an immigrant to come and work for a set amount of time in the U.S. It was a renewal like any other, described their attorney, Haroon Kaler. It was a normal, run-of-the-mill, very standard H-1B application, and subsequently a, a massive request for additional evidence was issued that we timely responded to with, uh, in our opinion, overwhelming objective evidence. USCIS requested more evidence. Kaler says they provided everything but got denied. They were just going through the motions to uh, make it appear that they were giving us an opportunity for due process, but in actuality, it, it was a foregone conclusion. This is happening all over the country. That's what senior data journalist Sanduja Rangarajan at Mother Jones discovered in an eight-month investigation. H-1B visas are used by uh, computer programmers and software developers, so definitely that's uh, an area that's definitely impacted. Uh, but we've also like found pathologists and architectural engineers and you know product managers and all kinds of people being denied. Ron Garajan found that from 2015 to 2019, the rate of denial quadrupled from 3% to 12. As that increased, so did lawsuits against USCIS. And so nearly like 100 lawsuits were filed in between like 2017 to 2019 when that number would be like uh, a handful per year before that. The trend started after the president signed the executive order, buy American, hire American. USCIS began creating memos, specifically this one. It instructed officers to apply the same level of scrutiny when reviewing non-immigrant visa extension requests even where the petitioner, beneficiary, and underlying facts are unchanged from a previously approved petition. While adjudicators may ultimately reach the same conclusion as in a prior decision, they are not compelled to do so. Officers began requesting more information, even questioning whether the special skill is actually necessary. They're, you know, really looking at these applications with a fine eye, and they're saying many of these jobs probably don't require college degrees, and so why do we need to give these skilled immigrants visas for those jobs? Cases like Kaler's client fought back in federal court. When this happened, Rangarajan found that in 40 percent of the cases, USCIS reversed its decision. Yet, they don't recommend it for every case. If your client has a, a not a somewhat checkered background, or you, if your client does not have a slam dunk a strong, viable H-1B case, then one may not, uh, then, then litigation may not be the best option. For Kaler, it worked out. Ron Garajan's investigation found that the majority of nearly 50,000 people denied their visas in the past year won't experience this kind of success. Attorney Haroon Kaler warns litigation can be long and costly. Before considering filing a lawsuit, he advises the immigrant employer and attorney carefully consider the pros and cons. In the studio, Valerie Gonzalez, Channel 5 News at 10.